Hello, my name is John with MidNetworks.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to deploy cloud servers on CloudStack platform. To get started, from your cloud portal, click on the Instances tab. Then, from the top right corner, click on Add Instance button. This will launch Deployment Wizard, which includes a series of steps that we will need to follow in order to configure and deploy a cloud instance. So let's start by selecting a zone, and then select how you'd like to deploy your virtual instance using a template or an ISO. Templates are the most common choice. They're pre-configured Windows and Linux OS images configured by MidNetworks with necessary VM tools and moderating agent. As for ISO, you'll first need to upload your ISO media into your cloud account and then use it to create your virtual instance. For this demonstration, I'll be creating my virtual instance using a template, so I'll keep the default option selected and continue. In the second step, I'll need to select one of the templates listed on the Featured tab. For this demo, I will choose a Windows Server template and go to the next step. In the third step, we'll need to select Compute Offering. Virtual machine instances are offered in a combination of CPU size and memory. You can select from one core with 1 GB of RAM and up to 8 cores with 32 GB of RAM. For this demo, I will select the two-core machine instance and continue. In step 4, it gives the option to attach additional disk volumes to your cloud server. Keep in mind, each cloud server deployed from template comes with 50 GB of storage capacity for one root volume, which is included with your hourly rate. So here, you're given the chance to add additional storage volumes, ranging in size from 25 GB and up to 1 TB. You can always add storage at any time from the Storage tab in your cloud portal. For now, I'll keep the default selection and continue. In Step 5, you're prompted to select Affinity Groups, which is also an optional step. You can utilize this feature to ensure that all your cloud servers are not deployed on the same hypervisor. This feature can be useful if you have multiple virtual instances running under your cloud account, offering the same type of services. Let's say web services, for example. And you want to make sure your web services instances are running on separate physical servers in the back end. This way, you can increase fault tolerance in case one of the physical servers failed. The other web instances will continue to run without interruption on the other physical host. Since we don't have any affinity groups configured, we'll skip this step. In step 7, we need to configure networking for our instance. You can select from one of the predefined networks either by selecting private network or public network. You can also add additional private networks by clicking the box to add network. This could be useful if you like to create VLAN separation between your virtual instances. By default, private network is selected. With this selection, all your VMs will be deployed behind a virtual firewall and will obtain a private IP address. If you plan to deploy your cloud instance and obtain public IP address directly, select the public network and change default network to public, then unselect private network checkbox. For this demo, I'll keep the default setting selected and continue. In the final step, enter a name to identify your instance, verify that the information you selected and entered in the wizard are correct, and click Launch VM. Now, let's wait a few moments while your virtual machine is being created. Once that's done, root or administrator password will temporarily be displayed on the screen. I will save that and use it to log into my machine. Now, I'll click on my server and from the Details tab, select View Console. Later, I'll show you how to set up Windows Remote Desktop and VPN to access this machine remotely. And with that, we reached the end of this video. I hope you found this informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.